People are massively divided on whether this was accidental or not. It was nothing to do with Jesus. So, in that moment... Oh. Serious question now. If Jesus Christ is just a myth, just a fairy tale, why does he make people so very angry? I remember this like it was yesterday. I was sharing the gospel with a Muslim man when suddenly, out of nowhere, this person appeared. Today, that if you ask Jesus to forgive you, yeah. if you put your trust in him, he can make you clean and perfect in God's eyes. But you've got to ask him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I think uh, so that people will do everything, yeah? Will do everything, yeah? Yeah, people will do everything. Uh, they will say that uh, Jesus will uh, forgive us. You know what I mean? So yeah. people will do crime, steal, and tell a lie, and then tell uh, Jesus will forget. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that. Uh, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. you think that essentially um, Jesus, you think that they, Jesus. You're dead. Are you okay? What? Are you all right? Are you all right? I'm yeah. good, thank you. Yeah. Do you, do you believe in Jesus? Do you? Yeah. Do you believe in I like Jesus? Well. Are you possessed by a demon, sir? As always. As always. Just film him. Just get him, Sam. Listen to me, I don't want to be that guy, but am I the only one who noticed his eyes change just before he walked away? Book of all time, you should be educated on what it says. You know what it says? It says you're an idiot if you follow it, you're a sheep. No. It doesn't. Yeah, it, says. it says you're a sheep if you don't. You're a lost sheep, you've no. gone astray. No, 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 I don't believe that. Jacob, yeah, you haven't read it, you shouldn't, so? you shouldn't remark on what you haven't read. And you okay, should well, you... I can mark on how I feel. You should do what you've done. So do what your father says and listen to what the Bible says, okay? If you're an atheist, I'll ask you again. Why does this only happen when the name Jesus is announced in the street? Yeah. Receive the deliverance that Jesus Christ oh, has for you today. If you think that street preaching is a waste of time, you need to hear this. But I bet that 99% of the people out here are getting so frustrated with you, and so upset with you, and so angry at God because of you. They're already angry at God. The Bible says they're haters of God. You're breaking my heart because I don't think that you're portraying the kind of God that people need and the kind of God that is real. What kind of God do people need? People need the kind of God who offers forgiveness and love, and I think that you're offering judgment. Is God going to judge people? Of course he is. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait a but, second. But you're not. I'm not judging them. I'm asking it's questions. Just because oh. I, I, think, I think that you and I probably believe the same thing, but what you need to do is go out into the world and live your message, and people will come to Jesus. It's not about debating with them and proving them wrong and yeah. telling them that they're bad people. Do you think they are wrong? So you're breaking you my heart. Wrong? Can I talk now? No. Can I talk now? No. Yeah. Do you think they're wrong if they don't believe in Jesus? I do. And do you think that if they die in their sins without Jesus Christ, where do you think they'll go? I think they'll go to hell. And you don't care enough to tell them now? Of course I do. Then why don't you? I do, but I do it through my life. I do it the way that Jesus did it, not the way that you did it. Jesus didn't ever preach? Fingers. Huh? Jesus didn't ever preach? Of course he preached, but he, did he, didn't, preach? he didn't debate. You're right, because they just sat and listened because he was a rabbi. Somebody from this fair might drive home tonight and die, and I don't want them to go to hell. I don't have time to be friends with everybody, but we do have time to preach to everybody. Do you preach to people and help them see their plight? I try to live just like Jesus did. I it's just not going to help them. But yes, it is. The Bible says, how will they know if nobody preaches to them? It's Romans 10. And how will somebody preach to them unless they don't get sent? My point is that you're wasting your time because 99% you know? of the and people... And it's irrelevant. Who, who is so angry with him? Okay. You know what? It doesn't matter. That's pragmatism. The question is, what are we commanded to go and do? 
and we are go called to go and preach the gospel and of live repentance. It. And live it. Are you saying I don't live it? No, I'm not saying that you don't live okay, it. I'm I just live saying... it, and I'm here proclaiming it because these people need to hear the good news of salvation. The Bible says that God's wrath abides upon humankind, that we are enemies of God in our mind through wicked works. We're, and his cup of wrath is filling up drip by drip, and on the day of judgment, he's going to pour it out, and people will go to hell. Don't you want to warn them now? I'm just, I'm not a fire and brimstone kind of person. I'm not either. It sounds like it. Is there fire and brimstone? And you're not kind enough to tell them about it? You're not kind enough to warn them about it? See, now you're judging me. I'm asking you a question, <laughs> sort of like you were judging me a moment ago. By the way, not all street preaching is negative. The vast majority of times I go out are very positive, like this one. How could I show you, even though we don't know each other, you don't know anything about me, how could I prove to you that I care about you? Come on, someone throw something out. What do you think I could do? This man's smiling at me now. You want to give me a hug, do you? Yeah, give me a hug. That shows you that I care about you. That's lovely. Okay. But I'm telling you now, I am telling you all that I care about you. I care about people. But I think one of the best things I could do is share some truth with you. Share some love with you, okay? Now, I need a bit of interaction. I've already got my friend. What's my friend's name? Will. Will, I'm Joe. I've got a cousin called Will, and he's my favorite cousin. So it's meant to be tonight, Will, isn't it? So I need a bit of interaction from you. Can anybody name to me Prison A then? Do you recognize? What did you say? Alcatraz. Give him a round of applause. Okay, great. What about Prison B? Prison B. Do you recognize that one? What is that one? It's near Manchester. All the prisoners climb on the roof. Strangeways? Strangeways! Oh, Okay, getting harder, we get harder. What about Prison C? Does anyone recognize? For those you going by, I'm saying, do you recognize any of these famous prisons? Do you recognize Prison C there for me? It's in Northern Ireland. What did you say? That's the maze prison. Come around the floor. That's right, okay. I told you I cared about you, didn't I? Now, my dear friends, listen to me. I've said to you, do you recognize these famous prisons? But let me ask you another question. Do you recognize that there's a prison which lives within us all? Now, we all might have a nice front on, a nice face on us, but we've all got prisons, haven't we? We've all got chains that bind us. Some of us have got the chains of pride, of, of bitterness. Maybe someone has hurt you so, so badly. But there's one chain, there's the worst chain which binds every single one of us. Do you know what it is? It's the chain of death. Ten out of ten people die. Am I right or am I wrong? Right. Right, but let me ask you this. Do you have an answer to your grave? If I said to you, imagine tonight is your last night, I hope it's not, because you're nice people, I hope you've got many more years left, but imagine tonight is your last night on planet Earth. You die and you face the almighty creator, and this God says to you, insert your name, why should I let you into heaven? What would you say? Well, maybe you might say I've been a good person, or maybe you might say, well, you're a nice God. But God says, listen to this verse, he says, no liar can have, no liar can enter heaven. Now that's a big problem because I've told lies and you've told lies. So none of us can get to heaven, but the good news is this, okay, listen. Two types of people get to heaven. Perfect people and forgiven people. Now raise your hand, anyone going by, is anybody perfect? Not are we, but every single one of us can be forgiven. Listen to this verse, this is beautiful. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. When Jesus hung on a cross 2,000 years ago, he shed his blood for your sin, for all the wrong things you've done. He bled there and he died there so that you could be forgiven because he loves you. He died there because he cares about you. Now, someone tell me, have you heard of the writer called C.S. Lewis? Raise your hand if you heard of C.S. Lewis. Tell me, what was the famous book C.S. Lewis wrote? What was it? Narnia, the Chronicles of Narnia, that's right. But C.S. Lewis also wrote another book 
and it is called the screw tape letters and it's going to sound a bit a bit weird for you but it's basically there's about one devil a chief devil who taught another devil how to get people to hell and this younger devil one day said what are the three most poisonous lies which have a man's mind to tell him that he will go to hell forever what can i deceive him with and the devil looked back and he said the first lie is this tell him he's a good person remind him of all of his good deeds he's done remind him of all the charity gifts he's given make him feel good about himself lie number two tell him this tell him there's no god tell him science has disproved god there's no chance there's a god who created the world so just enjoy your life enjoy it all and then the third lie the most poisonous lie he said which will make sure millions upon billions of people are in hell is this lie tell them they've got plenty of time friends some of us might not have plenty of time we often think we've got years and years and years but for some of us our time might be much shorter than we think we've got a friend on this team and his cousin climbed up a mountain two days ago at 17 years old he isn't walking back today he isn't coming back We're, young people die too i'm going to put one i hope you can see now that i'm not your enemy i'm your friend here and i love you and i'm going to put one final gift to you as a friend i want to give you a book I want to give you a free gift here and this is a book which will tell you how to get eternal life to find Jesus Christ to find the hope of the gospel that Jesus rose from the dead and he loves you if anyone's brave enough please just come and take it from my hand I'd love to give it you may God richly bless you all God bless you well thank you so much God bless you anyone else want one come and take it all Jesus said come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest would anyone else like one more for you? I know many of you by now know why this channel is named Off The Curve Ministries, but for those of you who don't, it's very simple. I used to make purely street preaching videos, just like this one you've just watched. And because my name is Joe Kirby, spelled K-I-R-B-Y, and because I preach off curbs, that's why it's named Off The Curb. I can spell correctly for those of you who are a little worried. And also, of course, because these videos, they're a little bit unusual, a bit like my personality, they're a bit off the curb. So if you would like to subscribe to this channel we'd be grateful for your friendship and if you'd like to see my new street preaching videos where I put all of my street preaching efforts on please do check out this channel here God bless you all and thank you so much for watching